Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch. Now we're at the midpoint of the year, aren't we? Where the sun is out and we're celebrating with our midsummer rituals and our bonfires and our parties because the sun is extremely powerful. However, in all this excitement, we've slightly forgotten, have we not, that the moon is also rather influential too. And so I want to give you five powerful, magical rituals for you to use in your daily witchcraft that involves the moon. Before we get into the video, I just need to tell you about today's sponsor, Authority Astrology. Authority Astrology is your new personal AI astrologist. You can create your own birth charts and then ask questions from the AI astrologer as to how this might benefit you. It's very easy, so let me show you how to do it. Start for free and fill in your birth details, which is your place, time and date. If you don't know your time, then just click from 12 and then this automatically produces your birth chart. It is from this birth chart that you can ask questions and the AI generated help will then give you the answers. So let's try. I'm going to ask how can I improve my witchcraft? And then as soon as I click send, I get a full report generated. I'm not going to go through this report with you, but feel free to pause and read it should you wish. Suffice to say, it has plenty of suggestions about how I personally can improve my witchcraft based on my astrological chart. There are plenty of tools, such as celebrity birth charts, but my particular favourite is the romantic partner where I put in my name and Mr. Metherall's to see how we would get on. And apparently we're only 43%. There are so many different questions you can ask and I have been using it for the past couple of weeks and found it to be really clever and helpful in its suggestions. As you can see, I've asked here, is this a good day to start a new venture? And I get an instant report giving me an in-depth analysis of the pros and cons of starting a new venture today. And it appears that it is. It has consistently got five star reviews. I really enjoyed the ease of the interface and I loved the fact that it gives me lots of information which I could do myself if I could plot it and had the time, but I don't. And this is brilliant. I've linked the details in the description box below have a look at it and let me know how you get on actually because I love the fact that it's so user-friendly. I recommend this a hundred percent. Thank you Authority Astrology. The moon has been venerated by so many different cultures. It's got a central theme of intuition, time, wisdom, clarity of thought and this moon influence obviously is going to have some effect on us. If it can pull the tides of the oceans towards it, it can obviously have an effect on our energy too. I love using the moon. It's very good for personal, intuitive matters. The sun tends to have an earth-wide, powerful narrative going on, and the moon is much more individual. The ancient Greeks and the Romans, the Celts and our pagan ancestors all believed that the moon was female. The Greeks called her Selena, the Romans Luna. And the moon was such a big deal in the Celtic nations that they had several goddesses associated with them, Rhiannon, Elathan, Ceridwen. So our pagan ancestors had her as a big deal. As do I, actually. I love the moon. Um, this point in time, as I said previously, is when the moon is pretty powerful and your first few weeks of July should really be looking at moon-based magic. You can use the moon in any spell that you like, of course, because it just gives lunar energy, that intuition, that knowledge and that understanding and adds a deep layer to any spell that you use the moon in. I did have a client the other day who showed me her wand and I was looking at the spell that she cast with this wand and the wand itself was completely joined up with the moon and there was all this lunar energy coming in and I was therefore working through the spells with her going, oh, I think we've got to include the moon because the wand already has. It has so much effect upon the energies of our wands, of ourselves, of our tools that we use, that you cannot really ignore its effects. And therefore the moon's energy is rightly regarded as extremely powerful. 
Now, modern pagans have lots of different phases of the moons. But in this video, we're going to concentrate on the five main phases of each moon and how that's going to work with you and your spells. The Wiccans have the moon as a triple goddess and they practice the ritual known as drawing down the moon. Drawing down a moon is where a group or a coven of witches get together and the high priestess will ask the moon to inhabit her energy. She goes into a trance and whereupon she can really powerfully use the moon's energy in order to direct it and get a greater understanding of whatever task is at hand. This drawing down the moon into the high priestess will give them the lunar insight into that knowledge and understanding that they require. The drawing down the moon ritual can be done actually by anyone. If you stood out on a moonlit night with your feet on the ground and gazed at the moon and asked the moon to bless you with its energy, you're pretty much drawing down the moon. I mean, that's a very simplified version of it. There's different levels, of course, but it's one that I often do by myself. Let's go into more detail on the moon phases. Essentially, there are two phases. There is a new growth phase, which is where the new moon waxes into the full moon. Then there is the waning phase, where the full moon depletes in size into the new moon, and then the cycle starts again. So the waxing moon is a time for growth and positive magic, and the waning moon is a time for releasing and banishment magic. The waxing moon is reaching outwards magic, and the waning moon is a drawing in magic. So two different styles of energies. Within these two phases, there's plenty of segregation and you can get into real detail about every single day that the moon shows its face again, what spell would work best. However, I'm just going to show you five rituals that you can carry out through each of the sort of five major times of the moon. So the new moon is when the moon is dark for three days until you get that lovely slither thin crescent of the moon. Now this phase is about setting out your aspirations and goals for the coming couple of weeks because if you set your goal period now the moon will grow with your plans and when you reach the full moon then you will find that your goals will have come to fruition. Traditionally, great ventures should be started at a new moon, such as moving house, because by the time the full moon comes around, you'll be settled and happy. The dark of the new moon is associated with the quiet planning stages so that your ventures can become great. So this is a ritual that I use for the new moon, and I start by setting a circle with candles. I'm then going to lay my intent onto the circle using my wand and I'm casting the circle for my greatest and highest good. And then within that I will set my intent that will align with the moon to grow whatever I want up until the full moon or beyond if I need be. Once you've written down your aspirations, ask the new moon to join you and guide you so that this can come to fruition by the full moon. And so, mote it be. The midway point of the moon is the waxing phase. It's got more energy to it and more sort of growth coming through than the new moon phase. So that is more of a quiet and planning stage. This waxing phase is when things are starting to happen. The waxing phase, I always say, is great for manifesting. An easy manifestation is to cast a circle, use lots of moon energy stones and crystals and flowers within this circle and call whatever it is that you want to manifest to yourself. I often repeat a mantra when using this ritual as I find it particularly hones my energy and creates the outcome that I need. I guarantee you'll see some excellent results from that one. And now we reach the full moon. This of course is a celebration, isn't it? The full moon is when the moon is at its strongest and most energetic and therefore powerful. Full moon rituals tend to be those of completion. For example, my coven will initiate new members into it on the night of a full moon, and it is a celebratory rite. 
the full moon is also a great time to complete those very long complex rituals that you might have been working on for a couple of weeks. Now people say to me, well what on earth could you be working on for a couple of weeks? I can tell you. Warding, for example, you set up your wards, you have a look at them, see if there's any breaking in them, see if they need help, see if they need to settle in any way. And you can then complete these sorts of very complex spells on the night of a full moon. And that full moon energy will just bring you an extra layer of help. The fourth phase of the moon and within its cycle is the waning phase. Now this is a particularly brilliant time to do banishments and releasing. So should you have collected a load of negative energy, and goodness knows, most people who practice witchcraft tend to collect negative energy because they're more open to psychic influences. So I do think that a moon bath at this time, when the moon is releasing its energy and can help you release your negative energies. Now a moon bath is simply a bath with intent. So lie in your bath, collect your moonstones around you, add some salts. Before you get in it, ask the moon to join you and help you release any negative energies that you may be carrying. Now the great thing about doing it in a bath is because the water is cleansing and so it will release physical negative energies from you. It will also release spiritual or psychic negative energies from you and it runs off down the plug hole out into the drains, perfect place for it to go. So a moon bath is a great way to utilise the moon's energy during this waning phase. Likewise, if you want to do any cleansing or clearing in your house, do it now. Open all your windows, you know, bang your drum, play your loud rock music, get your smoke out there. Whatever you're doing, however you're cleansing, the moon will help you during this time. And lastly, the final phases of the moon's cycle is when the moon becomes dark. Now this is a time for self-reflection, to look into your innermost self. I often like to write down in my journals how I performed as a witch over this month, you know, which spells worked well for me, you know, where I went wrong, where I can sort of do better. It's a great self-reflective time and it will really help you move forward in your witchcraft path. This time of year I know is concerned with the moon, not just because my traditional ancestry tells me so, but it's filled with flowers of the moon. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and do that share thing. I, do you know, I've been on this platform for several years and I'm still not entirely comfortable with sharing videos. I just find it a bit, um, I don't know, but I'd very much be pleased if you could share mine. If you want to learn more about witchcraft, of course, go to my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill. You'll find plenty there for you to have a look at. I would be thrilled if you could join me at the Coven because we learn something new every month and I promise you, you'll enjoy it. Otherwise, I will see you next week. <laughs>